people are jabbing him for the serious things, the unserious things, like the way he greets. Yep. <laughs> but what do you make of the Arsenal situation? Some people say that Venga out, Venga in, Unai out. It's the same. Nothing has changed. Let me tell, let me tell you this. I was never in support of this acquisition. I was always I always felt like, regardless of how unproven he was, Nikel Ateta fits the profile more ah. of what Arsenal needed to do. I, th I think I think we spoke about this. Look, he's just go and and, and if you, you see, there's this thing I I like about football that I'm learning the most that even with our best managers, our most revered managers, they are not the main brains of the sort of yeah. football their team plays on the pitch. They, Ateta, are, they are the sidekicks. Good. Ateta who... is the architect of the Manchester City brand of football we are seeing in the last two years. And so you ask yourself that, as Arsenal, what is your identity as a team? What is your philosophy? You want to continue to play attack-minded football, possession-based football. What is Unai Emery's philosophy? What is his identity? Now, one thing I think got Unai Emery's Arsenal job are his severe Europa League trophies. <laughs> that, that, for me, was the main... I mean, game changer in getting him this job. Now, again, I'm still struggling to see what the identity of Arsenal is at this point. I still can't tell if Arsenal are a defensive-minded side, if they are an offense. That, that's, that's always the first point of contention. And you see, when it comes to training professional athletes, there is nothing that disgruntles professional athletes more than, one, a coach that doesn't have a plan or doesn't seem to have a plan. Two, a coach that overthinks the obvious. And three, a guy that cannot face responsibility in front of everybody. That's the problem. <laughs> now, look at Unai Emery's history from back in Valencia. His Valencia team was all over the place. It was as indisciplined as you can find. Go back to his Sevilla team as well. Gary Medel, all over the place, all the time. But he, were, he will argue and say he won three straight Europa League titles. He did, but that's... Uh, more tailored competition. And we, we all know the dynamics of a tailored competition like the cup competition and the dynamics of a marathon competition like a league. If I, if I, if I, from how I look at it, Arsenal, if they were looking to replace Wenger, should have gone elite. Unai Emery is not an elite coach. If you were okay. not going to go elite, then you were going to have to go with guys like, like I'm saying, Arteta. a guy like Mikel Arteta. So if you are not getting a Poch or a Mourinho or somebody in that mode, an Ancelotti, you are getting a Mikel Arteta, maybe a Thomas Tuchel, somebody in that mode. But Una Emery, for me, really isn't that guy. And what makes the situation even more dire is that you look at the sort of transfer business that Arsenal did. We're all here hailing Arsenal for doing the best piece of transfer business. But that business has just not come together. Why? Because a host of those players have just not been able to play together. Kieran Tierney obviously has shown signs that he's brilliant. Every now and then, he's on the bench. Gabriel Martinelli shows lots of potential. But you see, a youngster showing potential does not mean that he should be starting ahead of a, pro a proven player. Why okay. on earth are we 12 games into the season? And Arsenal fans have still not ever witnessed Obama Young, Lacazette, Pepe, and Ozil in one game. Why? Why? I mean, do, they, do they have to beg for it so now? Some people can argue and say that that leaves Arsenal too bare and too exposed. I don't, really, I don't really think so. Look, you can play an Obama Young, Lacazette, Pepe, and Ozil and, and play with two anchor men. Play well, as some, much well, defense Somebody as will argue and say two is not enough. Depends on how you want to look at it. Depends on how you want to play. But again, you need to put your best hand forward. I don't understand this bit where you have a big game, you are expecting <laughs> a top-level striker that, a, a top-level striker whose name and reputation alone confuses defenders, is on the bench. It just, it just makes your opponents work a lot easier as a manager. And he, he doesn't do himself any good with all these things that are happening. Now, Granny Chaka has been stripped of his yeah. captaincy. So it has been given to somebody else. At the end of the day, look, if you ask me, I think Unai Emery is walking a very tight rope. He's walking towards losing at the Arsenal yeah. dressing room. Because, if to be honest, there are no big egos in this Arsenal dressing room. And, that, and see, that's the, that's the worrying problem. This Arsenal dressing room is wishy-washy. There are, are no big egos in there. They are, <laughs> they are easygoing players. If you cannot take charge of this Arsenal dressing room and march them towards a top four title, there's nothing you can do for me as a manager. You can win all the Europa Leagues in the world, but don't even forget that the Europa League is a second-tier trophy.
Okay, but these days it gives you a Champions League ticket. Well, that's added value.